In this video, I want to take a look at how to use Odin with scriptable objects to make them easier to use and more powerful in the development of your project. The last video looked at how to create scriptable objects and a couple examples of how to use them. If you're not familiar with scriptable objects or how to create them, make sure you check out that video first. To get started, I have a scriptable object that contains some basic enemy data, such as the enemy name, a description for the enemy, a model for the enemy, as well as a handful of stats. As a side note, you can download all the files that I'm using in this video from a link in the video description below. Each instance of a scriptable object can define a different enemy, the idea being to separate the design data from the runtime code. This becomes increasingly important as a project grows in size. The default inspector for the scriptable object is functional, but we can make it better with some Odin attributes. The first attribute that I'll add is box group, and I'm going to add that to the enemy's name and description. I'll give the group a name of basic info, like so. This groups the two fields together in the inspector and gives them a heading as well. You may notice that there's some space wasted between the labels and the values for the fields. Adding the attribute label width allows the width of the label to be set, and in this case, I'll set it to 100. If I let the script compile, I can see the inspector is already looking better. The default size for a string field can feel a bit cramped, especially for something like a description. So to get a bit more space to work with, I can add a text area attribute to the description field. This allows a few more lines of text to be seen. If you need even more lines to be shown, you can add an argument for the minimum and maximum number of lines to be shown. Next, I'm going to create a few more groups to organize the remaining fields. I want the model field to be in line with all of the stats fields, so I'll add a horizontal group to the enemy model. Then I'll add the arguments of game data and 75, where game data is the name of the group and the 75 will control the width. Next, I'll add a preview field, which will create a small window so I can see what the model looks like. Passing in the argument of 75 will set the width of the preview field. Finally, I'll add in a hide label, as I just want to see the preview of the model and I don't need to see the label of the field. Then for each of the stats fields, I'm going to add a vertical group attribute so all the stats will be stacked together. I also want to stack them as a subgroup of the horizontal group defined above so they are next to the enemy model. To do this, I'll pass in the argument game data forward slash stats. The first part of the string associates this vertical group as a subgroup of the game data group, and the second part creates a new grouping. Then just like before, I'm going to add a label width attribute to each stat so the labels take less space in the inspector. I'll then add a range attribute with minimum and maximum values for each of the stats. This is a built-in Unity attribute that draws an easy-to-use slider for each of the values. Lastly, I'll add the GUI color attribute to each stat to add a little color to the inspector. Now the goal of the enemy data scriptable object is to drop them into game objects that can make use of the data. For this example, I've created an enemy control script that has a slot for the enemy data scriptable object. Right now, the script will use the data from a function called loadEnemy, which is called in the start function. The loadEnemy function will load the model for the enemy and will set the nav agent speed. And of course, the function could do any number of other things with this data. Now this is a good start, the data will get loaded when the game starts, but with Odin we can go a step further. In the enemy control class, I can add on value changed to the enemy data field. I can then pass in the string load enemy. This will cause the function to be called whenever a new scriptable object is dropped into the inspector in edit mode. This can be seen in action by dragging and dropping different scriptable objects into the enemy control script. Since the load enemy function also updates the speed of the attached nav agent, swapping scriptable objects in play mode results not only in a change in the model, but a change in behavior, which further shows the power of scriptable objects. Depending on your design workflow, it might be helpful to edit the scriptable object fields from the inspector where they are used. And there's at least two ways to make this happen. The first is to add inline editor to the scriptable object field, or the attribute can be added to the class itself, like so. Adding the attribute to the class will cause the inline editor to always be shown, but only requires it to be added once. So use the method that works best for you and your project. And one last thing, it's good to remember that there's only one copy of the scriptable object in the project. 
So changing the values in the inspector is the same as changing it in the project folders. Change it in any one place, and all scripts with access to the scriptable object will have access to the new data. It's neither good or bad, it's just the way scriptable objects work as opposed to mono behaviors. As another side note, on the Odin Inspector website, there's a page for community-made tools. One of those tools is the scriptable object creator. Rather than hunting through the already cluttered asset menu, you can simply right-click on the folder in your project, select Create Scriptable Object, and a custom editor, which happens to be made with Odin, will pop up. The editor will show you a list of scriptable objects in the project, and if you click on the scriptable object, the editor will also show a preview. You can then press Create Asset at the bottom to create a new instance in the folder. That's pretty handy and another great example of the power of Odin. This tool will become an official part of Odin when version 2.2 is released. In the next video, I'll be looking at how to create a simple editor window with Odin to create and manage scriptable objects. So make sure you're subscribed and don't miss that video. I hope that was interesting or better yet, useful for you and your project. And until next time, happy game designing.